debating pretty hard right now on whether or not to make this a hard body swim bait or a soft plastic jig kind of lure. It's a critical decision. There's a lot of critical decisions to make at the beginning of making a lure. This beast will be something I attempt to catch trout with. It's an earwig. It's almost four inches. A four inch earwig. Soft plastic. I'm gonna do soft plastic. The head and that piece will be part of a jig with a jig hook coming out and the rest of the body, including these two little claw things on the back, soft plastic. Decisions made. I'm not going back on it. I'm not gonna go back on that. It's been a long time since we've had fun facts on this channel. The one days. I've been starving you guys of them. I really don't know very much about earwigs. Do they go in your ear? They must go in your ear. I don't, why would they have a name like that? It's hot out here. This laptop fan won't shut up, so um, I, I'm, I can't say I'm sorry. I'm not. I, I hate this laptop. I'm just as frustrated as you, so whatever. Earwigs. They have five molts in one year before they become an adult. What's a molt? It's where they shed their exoskeleton. They do that five times and then they're an adult. Humans need a really defining thing like that. Should have to like grow and shed five heads before you're an adult. Earwigs have great mothers. They actually care for the eggs, which is rare in the insect world. And even after they're hatched and they're nymphs, they'll continue to watch over the offspring right up until the second molt. And then they, they abandon their children and they don't care about them. It's a pretty good mother for an insect. We still have got to know information on whether or not these things go in your ear. I'd like to know that. Let's move on. So the common, tr oh, right? We've run into it right away. Here it is. The common term earwig is derived from the old English ear, ear, ear. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk like I'm German or just like an old English dude. Ear, ear. E with a line over it, A-R-E, which means ear. And wickerga, which means insect or beetle. This isn't going anywhere, one sec. Entomologists suggest that the origin of this name is a reference in appearance to the hind wings, which are uniquely distinctive among insects and resembles a human's ear. That's stupid. That is such a letdown. It's because it was so built up, I thought these things go in your ear. I haven't read this whole paragraph, but as of now, I'm pretty disappointed. The name is more popularly thought to be related to the old wise tale that earwigs burrow into the brains of humans and through the ear and laid their eggs there. Earwigs are not known to purposefully climb into the ear canals of humans, but uh, there's been anecdotal reports of earwigs doing that, so they don't. The answer is no, that they don't, and it's because their rarely used wings are shaped like a human ear is why they're called an earwig. I'm gonna have to tell my child that, and they're gonna be like, oh. Well, let's see if there's any fun facts on earwigs that don't let us down. They can get bigger than you think. I don't know where you're from, and I don't know if, what kind of earwigs that you've seen, but they can grow almost to two inches long. Of course, I'm making a four-inch one, so this is twice the size. Very big. This is a giant earwig. That's probably what the title of this video is, making a giant earwig lure. But yeah, they start out around seven millimeters, and they can grow all the way to 50 millimeters. Some species can. The largest existent species of the earwig is the Australian giant earwig, and it's two inches long, quite the bug. The largest non-existent, the largest extinct species of the earwig genus is 3.1 inches. So we're getting closer, but you still aren't anywhere near my lure. So the males are the ones who have the more curved pinchers, and the females, they end up having this little straight, uh, that's a male. That's a female. The pinchers are just kind of straightened out and flattened against each other. The males have curved pinchers like that. I don't know why yet, one sec. Oh, the pinchers are used to capture prey or defend themselves. Earwigs only live for a year after they hatch. In the fall, they burrow out a little spot in the ground and they lay their eggs just like that. That one made a little burrow in the ground and that's where the eggs go. And the female hangs out there, protects the eggs, the eggs hatch, and then a couple molts later, the earwigs go off into the world and do the earwig thing. And, you know, not too long after that, they're dead. Bugs, man. They're nocturnal. They stay tucked away somewhere during the day. And if they're gonna come out, it's at night. Oh, there's one species of earwigs that if they're frightened or threatened, they squirt a foul smelling yellow liquid. It's described here as a jet of that from scent glands 
On the dorsal sides of the third and fourth abdomen segment, they are able to aim the discharge by revolving the abdomen and they can simultaneously use their pinchers in defense while they do this. What a ferocious, stinky little bug that would be. You can respect that dough, it's just a little little ugly bug. Good for it. They, they mostly resort to scavenging, but sometimes they're omnivorous and predatory. Like they capture their prey with their pinchers. The whole abdomen, the back part of an earwig, it's flexible and muscular and can move around a lot. They can uh, arch it and grab with the pinchers. They're probably pretty formidable for their size, you know, a little 20 millimeter long bug that's able to grab stuff with its butt. One of them's able to shoot stinky stuff, so. It's been observed that some of the earwigs use their forceps and they hold the prey. Mostly males do this since theirs are curved and more apt for that. Cut that out because that was talking about intercourse. Sorry. That's what the male does during that. I'm cutting this out. I don't need to talk more about that. They're just a pretty meh kind of bug, you know? I thought these fun facts were going to be like way better. This bug is a bit of a letdown. Hopefully it makes for a good lure. Fun facts are over. I have some explaining to do. I was making this little one where it was going to be a jig head and a soft plastic body. Oh, and I didn't even tell you guys, I sized it down. I went from this big to this big. But that doesn't even matter because uh, we're not doing that at all. Uh, I, I kind of remembered I made a Helgramite this exact same way. And I wasn't thrilled about how it turned out. And it wasn't that great of a lure even. You can just go to Walmart and get a jig head and twist your tail and it's like the same thing but better. But we're going with this now, the bigger earwig. And it's gonna be a hard body. Decisions made, I'm not going back on it. And uh, cut out some legs for it too. It's gonna have soft plastic legs, these things that I'm gonna mold in an open flat pour kind of mold and a wooden body. And I do not know uh, like if I'm gonna put a joint in this or a lip or I still have to cut out this claw section I left this one piece of wood for now, but I mean really I'm at a point in this build right now where I need to come up with some answers about a single joint swim bait kind of thing crank bait So now I'm thinking a lip coming off of the head right there line tie right on the nose and right where my finger ends right there a Joint on that seam right there. I'll probably change my mind. Whatever keep going. Bottom of this bait, I gotta cut some slots for these legs to go in. There's just gonna be a cross section like that, and I'm gonna super glue the soft plastic legs into the body. But I need that spot for them to be super glued. There. I got a little bit of smoothing off to do on those legs, but I'm not gonna get any more complicated than that. Look nice and squiggly, and they fit into the body really nicely and snug. Perfect fit right now. And I do actually need to get these three pieces in a mold tonight because I'm going to be fishing with my friend Larry Wednesday, and it's Monday right now. So I got today, it's like three o'clock right now, so I have like half a day and tomorrow to finish this entire lure. The silicone has a set overnight for this mold, so I have to get this in a mold today. I'm just gonna do that right now. I got just enough silicone left. I'm just gonna super glue these to this wax paper. And I'm just gonna super glue this mold box to the wax paper too. I like using wax paper when I'm making molds now. This is actually tracing paper, but it's pretty much the same thing. No need to degas this, that's just a waste of time. This mold's so small and simple. It's nice to get this out of the way so soon though. Then I can just focus on the body and getting this bait to function right. Well, look good and function right. I've already got a ton of detail into the body of this bait. And on an earwig, I don't know, there is a lot going on and I feel like I've captured it all, but all the plates are pretty smooth. I'm pretty close to being done with the detail on this bait. It's missing a very important part, which is this. I need to glue this piece of paper back on and cut these pinchers out. That looks good. Right away, I'm gonna saturate these claws in super glue. 
I don't want to take any chances of these things breaking. Now I can work on the inside of these and chamfer the edges however they need to be and I won't worry about breaking these off. Who knows, I might still. It's the next day, the mold's set the mold for the little soft plastic legs. I don't know what it is about this bait. I can't come to the conclusion that this body is done carving. I keep carving on it, but it's already really detailed. I think I'm going to, no matter what, I'm just gonna do one more thing to this bait. I'm just gonna smooth off the head a little bit and add a spot where an eyeball can go. And then I'm gonna seal the wood and then I'm gonna start painting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if I got that on camera, but this knife, I've gotten so close to cutting myself with this knife pretty bad on all occasions, but I have not. I felt that blade hit me all across there. It touched me. Good thing I wasn't swiping because it's sharp. Oh, I was going to add a lip and cut a joint. Durr. All right, let's do that. So this is hopefully just gonna be sort of a suspending, shallow running jerk bait kind of deal. That's a super realistic representation of an earwig. Giant earwig. Did you guys know we're making an earwig? As you can see, that doesn't leave very much wood to connect the head to the body, but once I glue that lip in, it'll be stronger than the wood. Let's cut out a lip. Probably just gonna do that really quick, one second. Got that cut out. This is the shape and style of lip I was going for. Very circular and wide. I wanted to match the thickness of the body with this lip. Looks just like that. As of right now, I am strongly considering not even cutting a joint into this bait and just seeing how that works. I have a feeling it'd have a good jerk bait action. I'm going to put some lead in this bait. Right behind the last leg is the center of mass, and that's where I'm gonna put some lead. Yeah, I'm not gonna put a joint in this bait. I feel like that's kind of taking a risk. The action might not be ideal, but I don't wanna put hardware in the middle of this bait and weigh it down. I feel like it has a better chance if I don't put a joint in this bait. Not for any conclusive reason or uh, point of experience I have around this, it's just all based on a feeling. We're going off of my feelings today. Just glued that in and it's straight. Man, I don't know. Maybe I should put a joint in this. I could do a simple, just a straight cut joint and a screw eye coming out of one end, there's a slot in the other. Ah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Even though I just glued that lip in, I'm gonna go cut that joint. Yeah, I'm not gonna put a joint in this bait. This bait has been so all over the place. Now there's definitely going to be a joint. No going back. That was the right choice. This is gonna be awesome. I'm using a little twist wire as the connection back here. And I'm just gonna twist this in whatever distance it needs to be and then kind of bend it to the right angle. That's what's gonna go inside the slot that I haven't made yet on this side. I'm just gonna try to get it to right about there. And it's just gonna be able to move like that. So now I've got the wire that I'm gonna use to pin the joint in. And I put that in my drill. It's not even, but it doesn't need to be. And it's a cutoff. Probably can't see it on camera, but it's sharp on the end here because it's a cutoff. And I'm gonna mark the hole exactly where I want this wire to go through. I'm gonna use the, the diameter of the wire itself to drill the hole. You get a really tight connection and glue up and fit when you do it that way. And that looks good. Instead of uh, a joint that would be limited to like hitting right there, and there on the edges because the, the piece doesn't have any lateral movement. This piece can do this now and that because I made that slot in there really long. I think I'll get a lot more action out of that instead of having this in line and immobile. Doesn't it look just like an earwig? That is a hole for a very small amount of lead that's gonna go in the belly. I think the hooks both being on the bottom of this bait's gonna do most of the ballast work to keep this bait upright as it swims, but still, I'm putting a little bit of lead in this bait. Poured a little bit too much, but then I drilled it back out.
That's pretty crazy how you can shape the baking soda and then apply the super glue and it's the same shape. You can mold like that. I just have to smooth this off a little bit and it's ready to go. Now it's finally time to seal this wood. And even though this is not a one day build, I'm using super glue because I think it works best. And this bait's gonna need it, especially with this slot right here. I need that to be waterproof without any clear coat because it's not gonna get any clear coat. Ready to paint. I almost completely overlooked the line tie on the nose. I'm just getting so excited about this bait, I'm skipping stuff. Somebody needs to calm down. Okay, now we're ready for paint. This is gonna be a difficult paint scheme. It's a plain one, it's bland. Those are hard. It's certainly not eye-catching. And when you're having to paint something that's that way, your paint scheme can really easily end up not eye-catching. Let's try to make this thing somewhat appealing, you know? Starting with white. Man, I taped that lip off really good. You see that? Yeah, man. This is like a brownish, reddish, tannish mix of just nothing that looks very good, you know? I'm gonna go from light to dark, and I'm just gonna, uh, I don't know. Here we go. I'm gonna try to do this all with an airbrush too. This bug doesn't have super specific color variations, so I think doing it all with an airbrush would be most realistic. I'm actually gonna start with this yellow. It's a very dark yellow. Now this bait's gonna get the reds. Some red oxide. This goes mostly on the butt portion. A Little bit up top won't hurt though. There is actually a lot on the head. With this color, it doesn't really matter where I put it. I just have to not get it on a very few parts, which I, I did. God dang it. It's okay, I can go back. Just for the sake of trying to keep things light, I have a really, really light brown in my airbrush. It's a flesh tone actually. And I'm lightening up the areas where I'm about to put normal brown on. I think that'll give it depth and give it highlights and make it not look just like a dark blob of nothing. Really focusing on that with this bait right now because I feel like this paint job can get screwed up really easily. Keeping the pinchers on the back a little lighter too. So now it's time for the brown. Burnt orange is the brown of choice with this bug. It's a warm brown, there's like there's like orange in it, but it gets it gets dark super fast, so it's brown. You can see it's quite a bit darker in spots on the shoulders up there. So I do believe this is going to be the last step with the airbrush. I skipped ahead a little bit. Um, I, th I thought you guys kind of got the gist of it. I was just going from dark to light, getting as detailed as I could. But I'm going back to light and I got that yellow back in the brush and I'm gonna um, try to do a little bit of highlights even though this is not an opaque color, it's transparent, so not ideal, but let's go for it. Kinda put some yellow on the tips there. That kind of detail is what I'm going for. A few more little details and I'll be happy. I wanna highlight some of these seams in the exoskeleton. This is some super watered down sapia. So it just kind of follows the seams and flows into the cracks. Got plenty of detail on this bait. Lots of contrasting colors, kept the paint scheme bright. Looks good. Last step is just to dot a little eye on it. Right there. That's about the right size. So I'm definitely not gonna want to have a bunch of clear coat clogging up these slots that I'm gonna glue the legs into. So I'm gonna dip this, let it drip, and then come back and really wipe these out before I put it in the tank. That looks extremely good. 
with a clear coat on it like that. Really brings everything together. Now for the tail piece, I'm not gonna dip it in all the way. I'm gonna bring it right to the surface of the clear coat and then I'm gonna brush clear coat right up to the slot, but none is gonna go in the slot. Okay, let's be careful. It's trying to push it all out of those slots. It's kind of a delicate process. I'm gonna leave this hang for a while longer. You guys like the new shirt? I do. Turned out good. So while I'm waiting on that clear coat to finish dripping, we might as well open up this mold. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I think the super glue made a really good seal. I'm just gonna cut this. Yeah, this will work good. Oops. Broke one of them. That don't matter. We got the mold. The leg slots are as clean as they will get. And the bait's dripped for as long as it needs to. This bait's ready to go. Into the UV tank. Four o'clock right now. I'm considering finishing this bait today and, t and uh, fishing with it a little bit tonight before I go trout fishing with it tomorrow morning. Let's get some soft plastic legs made for this bait. Get your microwave. The legs are gonna need to be like a yellow, yellowish. I might already have some here. I'm gonna add some heat stabilizer to this. Plenty of it. Start warming this up. Okay, the plastic is hot enough. Let's try to do this cleanly. That one did not flow nicely. Yeah, that one won't work at all. Okay, I gotta retry that. Second try. That was an absolute mess of a pour, and all of this is too set up to deal with right now, so I'm gonna have to like cut all that off, but I think this worked. That might be too much to cut off. This might not have worked. I'll let you know. These are gonna turn out fine. There's just a lot of flashing to cut off, but no big deal. Now it is set and good to go. Not tacky at all. Let's just check and see how these legs fit. You guys can't see that very well, but from this angle, that looks amazing. I might as well just glue these in and stop trying to show you. Fits good, looks good. Let's get this done. Getting that pin glued in on both sides. So I'm using some thick super glue now. And I'm just putting enough in there to where when I put the soft plastic in, it squishes out and fills out that whole slot. And everywhere the soft plastic's touching the bait, there's super glue is the goal. I'm fully aware that this is not a permanent solution. These legs will fall out and I'll have to clean the slots and put new ones in. I've got extras, but hopefully, you know, like they last a fishing trip, that would be good. And that is exactly what you don't want in your ear. And it looks great. Got some good squiggly legs. So, you know, even if the action isn't that good on this bait, the legs will still wiggle around. It's my backup. Don't take it away from me. I think it's got a, a chance of working though. A chance. I'm gonna throw some hooks on this thing. And we're just gonna go and catch a trout with it tomorrow. Just just go catch a trout with this thing is what we're gonna do. I've never asked for likes before on a video, but if I catch a trout with this, this four inch, yeah, this four inch jointed jerk bait earwig, and you don't hit the thumbs up button, then what would the point of YouTube even be? Go catch a trout. By the way, I added some little antennas to the head. Earwigs have that, so can't miss that detail. I just drilled out a tiny hole and glued them in. Couldn't help myself. I have to see how it works. So Chelsea and I decided to go to the pond just to see how this lure works, and we might catch something.
That one. Gotta keep it out of the weeds. Gotta bring it up. A lot of weeds right here. There we go. Nice. Before we even took it trout fishing, got a bass. I shouldn't throw my pliers on the ground. These are my nice ones. Tis official. Bass-like earwigs. Earwigs without legs, apparently, because I tore these off. Because the bait works way better without legs. <laughs> now the pressure's off. I still really want to catch a trout tomorrow, but I'm feeling better. I did get a hit by that rock. Yeah. I caught two creek chubs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sneaking ahead. Slippery buggers. Oh geez, very slippery. My first brook trout, and I didn't catch it. I didn't catch him on the earwig. I was just using a little jig. Is there a size restriction? No. Okay. And that's eatable? I suppose, yeah. Well, that's not too far off. No. Okay. As far as lengthwise, but body-wise, there's a little bit of a difference. Yeah. Oh, on the earwig. Nice. Rainbow trout on the earwig. I'm going to eat this guy. It's official. Rainbow trout like earwigs. <laughs> Giant earwigs. You got the biggest one so far. Yeah. First trout on a lure I've made. <laughs> Got a little beaten up, but it's a trout catcher. I did it. We did it. I caught a f I almost swore. Caught a trout on an earwig, on a giant earwig lure. Four inches long. It's a decent rainbow trout too. My life is complete, but not done. On to the next bait. It's kind of weirdly dramatic, wasn't it, Chip? Oh, and congratulations, uh, I think your name is Joseph, on winning the swim bait I gave away in the last video. You guessed an earwig first, and you were right. It was about 500 comments in, you guessed an earwig. It took 500 comments for somebody to guess that I'm making an earwig, so it was a pretty random thing. Nice job to you. Congratulations. Hope you enjoy that bait. All right, on to the next bait.